Welcome to part two of this little satisfying motion graphics animation I've been doing in Blender. If you haven't already seen the first part where I show you how to do the modeling and the animation, go ahead and check it out. But in this bit, we're gonna be adding some lighting and adding some nice materials. And as always, I'll be uploading my original file to Patreon, and you can also join my Skillshare for free by checking the link in the description below. So let's get started with part two. So let's go ahead and go Shift A. In fact, let's just, why well, do I always forget doing this, but let's just go to our render settings and change it to cycles and GPU if you have one. You know guys, the usual stuff. And under the max samples, let's just do 50 samples. Okay, now we can go Shift A and we can go to our lights. Let's add in an area light, one of my personal favorites. I'm gonna move it up and let's go to our light properties and let's give it a strength of 550. We are dealing with a bit of a larger scene. So, um, cause you know, the, it's a physically based engine. You have to have more um, wattage for a larger scene. Then we're gonna come here to the size. Let's increase that about three to four meters will do. And let's go G, move it over and R to rotate in. And let's go into a camera view and let's go Z and let's go rendered. And I'm gonna go control B and just drag over the camera just to limit the rendering to the camera. And from this case, I'm gonna to go to 770 or maybe even 800. Okay, that's a bit better. And then I'm gonna just duplicate this light in the top by going Shift D. And I'm gonna duplicate it about three more times, all around like so. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And then what I'm gonna do is probably grab the one here in the back and maybe make that 2000. Just so we get some nice strong lighting at the back or a bit of room lighting and I'll just increase the size. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. Might just duplicate it by going Shift D, rotate it slightly. And then we're gonna to go to our world properties. You can go to your color and you can get a sky texture, or you can go ahead and get an environment texture. Now I already have some on my computer. So if you don't have a HDRI, you can just go to Polyhaven where they have free HDRIs. Or uh, you can just type in free HDRI on the internet and you'll find one. I'm just gonna go have, get one that I always use. Um, but you guys are free to use that if you want. That's optional. You could just stick with the default sky inside of Blender. So now we have some lighting. Let's go into our shading workspace. In camera view, let's go Z, let's go rendered. And I'm gonna select this top disc. You might not be able to see, but I've selected this top disc over here. I'm gonna go new and just go, I'm not gonna name it. I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a yellowish orange material. And I'm gonna make it actually quite saturated. And I'm gonna go Z and go rendered. And I bring down that roughness. And I'm gonna grab the bottom one and go new. And with this bottom one, I'm gonna make it less saturated. But I'm also gonna bring down the roughness. So something like that. And then I'm gonna grab the background, which is this big thing over here. I'm gonna go new. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make that a mint green and kind of make it a bit darker, like so. And then I'm gonna go Z, go rendered. So yeah, something like that, maybe just a little bit darker. About here, kind of like a yellowish kind of green. And now that's looking pretty cool. So now let's select these bits that are gonna be the metal bits. So bits like this and go new. We're just gonna call this copper. Let's make it metallic and let's go ahead and give it a rosy kind of coppery material. Bring down the set, the value here a bit. And let's go Z and go rendered. And I might just bring down that roughness a little bit. So now we have some copper. And I'm just gonna select all of the objects over here that we need to have copper on. So it's gonna be this small cylinder, the rod attached to it. And I'm just gonna go ahead holding and shift select the object which is added the copper to, control L or command L and link those materials. So now they have copper. And then we're gonna select these spheres over here. We're gonna go new. And let's just go and make them a nice kind of orange as well make them really reflective by bringing down the roughness. And let's grab this one here, give it that same material. And then for both of them actually, we're gonna add another material. Let's just make that the copper. Let's grab this one and go plus, give it the copper as well. And then we're just gonna tab into edit mode for both of them and just select these bottom rods and go ahead and assign that copper. Tab back out and now if you go Z and you go rendered, you can see those um, lollipops there have the copper at the bottom. Um, we wanna make sure we grab the actual material that these spheres are made out of and make them really saturated and nice and orange. Okay, now they're really popping out. 
Okay, so that's looking really good. I'm gonna grab these guys here and give them that same material as the disc at the top that they're sitting on. And then we just need to grab this slab, go give it a new material, this is called slab. Now let's just grab the little second biggest cylinder and let's just also give it that slab material. And if this, we're gonna go shift A search and get a, um, let's go for Voroni texture. And let's go shift A search and get a Musgrave. And let's plug the color in, or let's, let's just actually just get rid of that. Let's just use the Musgrave texture and plug it into the base. Then we're gonna go Z and go render. And now we can see we have the Musgrave. And then you can go shift A search and get a texture coordinate. And let's plug the object into the vector. And now we can just go here to the detail and make it um, 10. And then I'm gonna go shift A search and get a noise texture. And, and um, once you have that, just place it between the Musgrave and the printable. And I'm just gonna grab both of those and move them over. Shift A search and get a color ramp. Place it over here. And now we just need to go ahead and drag these two values together like so. And now we've got some nice texture. I'm just gonna go ahead and bring down the roughness to make it more reflective. So now we have some nice kind of granite looking stuff. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and mess around with the scales a little bit. I like the way that looks. That looks pretty cool. And for my original, I just went and I penned it in some plants. Now, obviously you can find some free models on BlendSwap. There's plenty of places on the internet where you can get free plant assets. I just have my own library. So I'm gonna go ahead and just grab some plant assets. But you could add in any ones that you want. But it really just adds something interesting to this whole design. So I'm just gonna add this in. But I'd recommend you check out places like Sketchfab or BlendSwap. They have plenty of options. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's looking really cool. So when we're done with that, you can go back to your layout. You can go to your output, select the folder. I'm gonna to go to my desktop, change the file format to FFmpeg video, and then under the encoding, you can make a container MP4, and then make sure to save. Now just go render, and you render out your animation. Thank you for watching, and I'll be uploading my final result to Patreon. And if you've liked this little uh, two-part series on this uh, loopable motion graphic, you can support me by subscribing, liking my videos, checking out some of my other content, and even following me on Patreon, or even using my Skillshare link in the description below. I'll see you guys next time for another Blender tutorial.